This week on TGC News, there is more stuff than I can mention. Oh my gosh, let's freaking go! Welcome back to another episode of Gun Collective News, the only gun news show that covers things that you actually care about. My name is John Patton. Hello, welcome. It's nice to have you here. What's the difference between jam and jelly? Delicious jams and jellies? I can't jelly this much crap into one episode, so here we go. First this week is one that might annoy you, so warm up your little fingers to weave a comment. It's called the BioFire Smart Gun and it's chambered in 9mm and has a 4.7 inch barrel and 15 round mags. The smart features are where things start to get a little bit interesting. It has both fingerprint ID slightly below the mag release and on the rear of the gun is a facial scanner. Similar, but not equal to the one on your smartphone. That said, the gun can be unlocked with either of these methods. They say that these are stored on the gun in some encrypted format, but let's be fair. Major companies have made such claims about your data before and been proven very, very wrong. For instance, security company Eufy, a subsidiary of tech giant Anchor, was caught storing facial data and security video in the cloud after bragging about not using the cloud at all. BioFire also claims you can store multiple users and that the battery will last for months. There's also a smart dock, which is sort of the control station for adding users and whatever else they can do. It sounds really interesting. The footage from Forgotten Weapons appears to show a full-size 9mm working just fine. The MSRP on these things is 1,500 credits for the base model, and it goes up when you add some trinkets in different colors. I'm undecided on this whole thing because I don't trust the anti-gun brands that are plastered all over this company's website, but I do love innovative ideas. I would also love to hear your comments down in a, did you leave me a little comment? <laughs> I'm so dumb. You know what else I appreciate? The new weapon bags from Vertex. They've been expanding this line recently, and I'm, I'm telling you guys, these are some of the best, nicest, most well thought out gear bags that you can buy for your guns, your backpacks, your car, whatever. And that's why I use mine every day, no BS. If you use our code, TGC, you'll get at least 15% off, and that helps support this channel. So head over to vertex.com and use code TGC and get that discount right now. Moving on, let's all laugh together. Ha ha ha. At this new adjustable stock from Noreen that is now an option on that ULR Mini 50 BMG. We shamed them in weeks past for the basic stock, which appeared to only be designed to inflict pain. And now they've added this adjustable one with a neon green plastic cup shard for a cheek piece for 300 extra, making it a 2K gun overall. Ha ha ha. It's getting more expensive and less interesting as time goes on. Okay, next, a big announcement from Henry. They have expanded and are now offering revolvers. These are called the Big Boy Revolver, and they come in two flavors, a bird's head grip or a gunfighter grip. They're chambered in 357 Magnum, which also means 38 Special, and both have a four inch barrel and hold six rounds in the cylinder. The main difference is the grip. And the MSRP is not horrendous either at 928 credits each. Rolling along, Winchester finally officially announced the 400 Legend. I covered this briefly a few episodes back, but it's actually here now. They are claiming that this new cartridge has 25% more energy than 350 Legend and the same energy as 450 Bushmaster with 20% less recoil. As per usual, a gun is required to fire this new round and as far as I can tell, none exist yet. They say Mossberg, Ruger, Winchester, and CMMG are going to release those guns this year, but even Winchester, the company that made this, doesn't have anything listed yet. I guess time will tell if the cartridge holds up. Nosler has a new rifle out called the Carbon Chassis Hunter, and it's not cheap. From what I can tell, they've taken their action, which has been joined with a carbon fiber barrel of unknown origin, and then slammed that into the MDT Hunt 26 chassis, with a folding stock, which is 1600 bucks on its own. And the total miserp for these things is just shy of 5,400 credits. Yes, credits, yes. 
get used to it. They weigh about seven pounds, which is not groundbreaking at all, but it could be a very well-built and balanced rifle. I don't know, we'll see. Moving on from there, SIG has a new version of the 320 called the P320 AXG Legion. And this one moves the front sight rearward in favor of some big old ports. And the slide also has some different serrations and then you have slightly different grips. Otherwise, it's the same 320 internally. MSRP on this isn't listed, so I'll make it up. SIG wants a big old bag of hen's teeth for each one of these. Man, that is super weird, SIG. Why do you want all those non-existent teeth? You guys are so weird, Sig. You guys still with me? Good. Yes, this is a lot of stuff, and yes, there is more. Also, help a brother out. Help me out. Get yourself a Vertex bag with our code TGC. It would be rad to see more of you using good gear. Okay, FN announced two new ones this week. First is the FN15 Guardian, which is a mid-tier AR, and therefore pretty boring. It has exactly what you would expect and nothing more for 1K. They also announced the Reflex, which appears to be their attempt at a P365 Shield Plus Hellcat competitor. It has a 3.3 inch barrel, comes with an 11 and 15 round mag, it's optic cut, and it's an inch wide. It's also internal hammer fire similar to the Smith & Wesson Equalizer. It has an MSRP of $16.59, which puts it right in line and slightly above the competition. If they did a good job on the trigger, this could be a solid choice. Kimber also has a new gun this week called the KDS-9C. Terrible name, but the gun looks very interesting. As far as I know, this is the first ever double stack 9 mil from Kimber. It also has a fluted 4-inch barrel, 15 round mags, a contoured grip that reminds me of the Wilson Combat EDC X9, which I love. And then it's also got a 1911 trigger, which means it won't suck, and a bunch of serrations on the slide. It's also optic ready which is super important these days. So I, I mean, if it doesn't have an optic ready cut, like get rid of it. The MSRP for this one lands at 1500 and you can get it in black or not black. And rounding us out this week, a bunch of new stuff from Beretta. Yes, multiple. First is a new version of the A300 shotgun. It's called the A300 Ultima Sporting. And this one is making a run right for my heart. I have spent a lot of time behind Beretta shotguns and I love them. Like genuinely, I have a bunch and I like all of them. Essentially, this one is aimed at folks that like to shoot clay targets, me. You can have it in either 30 or 28 inch barrels, both in 12 gauge with extended chokes, a mid bead sight with a white front, and then these sort of unique green accents, like it's zombie stuff or something. It also has the kickoff setup, which is a recoil absorbing system that is something every shotgun could use. MSRP on these is 1150. Next in the new releases is the PMX. This is their take on a PCC type thing. We originally mentioned this gun way back in 2019 and it is finally here and shipping. To bring you up to speed, this is a direct blowback 9 mil with a 6.9 inch barrel, regular capacity mags, threaded barrel, and full ambi controls. As is the way right now, without a brace, this thing might be a bit weird to shoot, but it has some potential for sure. MSRP on this is 15 hundo. And rounding us out, a new pistol from Beretta, the APX A1 Compact. This is essentially a slightly smaller version of the APX A1 with a 3.7 inch barrel, 15 round mags, and an optic cut. MSRP on that is $4.99. And if you want to learn more, we just released a five minute review on that gun a couple days ago. So go watch it right now.